In the last video, there were a couple things about the calculator that I sort of breezed over really quickly, and you probably couldn't see anything on my junky old 83. So here I have a nice uh, 84CE that I wanted to show you a couple of those features again, maybe in a way that uh, would be more helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the calculator on. And if we press the graph button here, we're going to be able to see a nice uh, window that's uh, looking and getting us all the information that we want. And this came because I pressed zoom, and you can either scroll down to number six, or you can just press the six button on your calculator, and that will take you to zoom standard. Zoom standard is a really sort of useful default. And let's just take a look and see what some of those defaults are. When I press the window button right here, you can see that it's going to go from negative 10 in the x direction to positive 10 in the x direction. And every one unit, it's going to put a little tick mark. These little tick marks here show up on the x axis. Now also, the, another part of zoom standard is that we're going to go from a y min of negative 10 to a y max of positive 10 with tick marks every one. Now you can change any of these features. We might try to say, let's go from negative 20 to positive 100 with a tick mark every 10 in the y direction. And now my previously 45 degree angle right line, uh, uh, straight line that was going at a 45 degree angle has now become very slanted because the, the y dimensions are going from uh, a lot more, uh, a lot less to a whole lot more, but the x direction has stayed the same. So that's kind of the basics of the, uh, the window uh, button and how it works. If you press the y equals button up here, this is where we can put in a bunch of different functions. And you can see I've got the most basic function of all, y equals x. Uh, we could do anything we wanted in here, like uh, y equals 50, which would get us a nice uh, horizontal line. This is where you're going to put a function as given to you by some function definition, where f of x equals something or x equals something, and you can just graph the function. Now, what is um, sometimes confusing to people is this table feature. So if I press second graph, second graph, I get a table feature. And now mine is set up to show me all these different x values and all these different y values. Now you may be uh, confused uh, by that because yours might not be the same. And where do you think we look to set up our table to make it do like we want it to do? Right there, above window, second window, is this word table set. And in table set, we've got a couple of different features that pertain very much to what we're learning here in section 1.1. There's where do you want the table to start, in this case, 0. How much do you want the table to go up by every time? Uh, and in this case, that's just going up by 1 each time. And then do you want me to just, the computer being me, to just automatically go up uh, automatically increment the uh, independent variable and the dependent variable. Now normally, like we said in the lecture, this is y, uh, this, is, this is x, and this is y. So yours may be on ask. So let's go back to y equals uh, x, and now if I set up this, which is probably what it sounds like a lot of science teachers at Westminster have you do, is make the independent variable be ask. And now if I go to my table, it's blank. And it's expecting me to plug in some values here. So I'm able to input the x's, the uh, independent variable, and it's going to calculate the dependent variable for me. If you just want to have a big list to scroll through, which is usually what we're doing in math class as opposed to science, then it's probably more useful to you to just have everybody on auto, but then pick useful uh, increments for things to walk by. So those are some of the basics of y equals, of window, of table set, and of table. Um, the other thing that you might not know, you should, but you might not, is how to put in data. So we're going to push this stat button here. And the first choice, we're going to edit some of our statistics. We want to put in some x and y data. So I'm going to take the data from page 3 of the textbook there for the example problem. And I'm going to put in 0, 5, 10, 15, 
20 for my x values. And I'm going to move over. And for my y values, I'm going to put in 90, 42, 0.9, 27. Point, oops. 42.9, enter, 27.5, enter, 22.5, enter, and 20.8, enter. And so now I've got as many y values as I have x values, something that the calculator will flip out about if you don't do that. And I want to see them. So I press graph. Well, I've still got my function over there, but I don't see any of the data points that I equaled. That's because I didn't turn any of them on in stat plot. So I press second y equals. And here, I've got to specify, I want these points made out of L1, L2 to be turned on. So I press Enter in here. And then on the word on, I'm going to press Enter again. And now that stat plot will be on. But this is still not a great graph. I can see a lot of my function, but I can't see all the data points that I entered. So here again, there are some zoom features that are great. So you press zoom, and again, you can either just press the number or you can scroll down. Here we can see zoom stat, zoom statistics, automatically get me a window that will fit all of my data uh, in view. So I'm just going to press 9, and there, and there's still that crazy function, uh, is a bunch of uh, data uh, visible that I entered. So this is uh, all the more that we need to have uh, right about now. We've got window, y equals, uh, table, table set, stats, turning a stat plot on, and zooming stat. So I hope this will help you as you try to uh, navigate the calculator in this section.